I'm out today to do the dry run for the very last float fly of the season, which is tomorrow. So, you know, the season's kind of wrapping up all round, really, but conditions are not good, but I've not got much time, unfortunately. I've got to, I've got to get back for a meeting. It's, you know, it's still fairly dark now and it's kind of misty, but I'm going to start getting things out. As you can see, I've got the planes packed into the car. As usual, well, you know, I'm trying to get us, trying to see if I can take as many float planes as I can. So I got the three micros in the front there, and I've got the rest back here. And damp though it is, they're going to have to come out because because I gotta, I gotta, if I'm gonna do anything, I gotta move along with it. There's the. Wilga, the, the little Wilga 2000, the Hobby King Skipper, which we had out to the last float fly a few weeks ago, the E Flight Icon, uh, he's going to go back there with his nose down because they've probably got to go back in the car the way they're coming out. Uh, I don't know how else you'd put him in. And the fly zone beaver that I've put the floats on. And he, he's a bit big, he said. Uh, he kind of takes a lot of room and makes a tight fit in the car there. Uh, okay. Well, we'll see. We'll get those going and... Get the uh, get the transmitter out and things. I might uh, actually try the micros first. Okay, I decided to do the fly zone beaver first since he's got lights and he's fairly big. The mist is clearing somewhat. It was looked really quite bad when I came, but it is clearing somewhat. Hopefully, uh, so we got the battery in him. I've still got the uh, the covers over the over the uh, the water rudders here to protect them of course i'm going to take those off for flying off the water tomorrow but i put them on to protect the water rudders on the grass so the water rudders because they've got no springs on them unlike a lot of water rudders a lot of water rudders have a they turn you know but they have a spring so that they can go up out the way if they hit something these don't they're rigid i mean they turn sideways but they're rigid in terms of up and down they can't they can't go backwards and tilt up which is, I think, a design flaw, really, because even on the water, you know, you can, you could hit something, a log or something in the water, or when you bring a hit into the beach or whatever. So it's better if they tilt back, but these don't. So I'm currently covering them with little sheets of styrene there to smooth them off so they don't get bashed on the grass. And we'll take those off when we're flying them and we're off the water, so we've actually got some water rudders to steer us on the water. It's misty. It's not too cold this morning. It's supposed to be good weather for the float fly. Basically, t temperatures in the 20, low 20s, and and um, during the day, and and uh, virtually no wind. So that'd be good. It's a bit mistier than I like now, but I've got so little time. Take off flaps. We'll give a little flap, off. and we'll see what we can do. Blimey. Yeah. Now I noticed that before, he seems to, he seems to run for a while without doing anything and then to suddenly pop off, which is an odd behavior. Got very little time, so I just got to work through all the planes quickly. Yeah, not a horrible landing. Throttle cut off. Flaps up. Might be a little splashy if you came down like that in the water. You could do with running a bit more than that on the water, really. Anyway, there you go. That's the first one. The fly zone beaver. Decided to do the full size icon next. Number two. Mist is clearing fairly nicely, better than I thought, because it looked, you couldn't see a darn thing when I came with the dark and the mist, but it seems to be clearing fairly well now. Uh, 
The beaver I've never had off the water. I've had it for quite a while, but it's always had the wheels on. I just put the floats on recently. This, on the other hand, I just bought this year, but I have had it off the water. I had it off the water at the last float fly. Um, and that all went quite, quite well. He seemed to perform well off the water. Uh, he struggles a bit to take off off the grass because of the high thrust line and the, and the friction. But uh, generally I find I, I, he struggles less with the floats than with the water, with the, with the wheels. With the wheels it's very hard to get him to take off off the grass, to get him to run fast enough. The trick here is I've got to... Uh, we'd probably better, probably better put him in high rates because they need to control him as you take him off. See, it's just hard to get him moving like that. Yeah. Once you get him moving off the gra over the grass, you can level him off, and uh, you know then he takes off okay. But he's lying sort of on one side on the grass until you get him moving a bit, and you've got enough airspeed that you can use the airspeed to level off the wings. I have very little time this morning because I've got to get back for a meeting, so I'm just trying to get all these planes out, basically try them out. This guy, that's dead stick, which is a bit risky maybe, I don't know, just trying to see, no, he seems to come in dead stick fine, still bounces, and that was dead stick from way out, and he's, uh, I mean, meaning I zero throttle. I throttled him down way back there and just glided him in and he still bounced. Um, I was nervous about throttling this guy down because I had a nasty crash with him like the second time, my first or second time I think it was I flew him. Uh, but I don't think that was anything to do with him stalling. It was transmitter interference, I think. Anyway, uh, there you go. So that, that clearly demonstrates that you definitely can glide him in uh, if you need to. Uh, and as I say, he still took a bounce even then. That's the what it's the 1.3 meter Icon A5 from e -flight. Okay, next up is the Hobby, Co Hobby King Skipper. Uh, had this guy out at the last float fly as well and last year, so he's been off the water a couple of times. Still one of the planes that I'm a little more nervous flying off the water. He flies and in low visibility conditions. I, I'd be happy to still mist around. This guy is small and white, so he's hard to see, and he goes rather fast, and he has to be taken off fairly fast and landed fairly fast. So it takes a fair run to get him off, and then he comes in fairly hot. But that's just the way he is, you know, he's a sort of delta wing plane, so he, he, he doesn't have a massive wing. He's not terribly heavy, but he doesn't have a massive wing area in his eye. So that's just the way he is. I've got a rubber band on to hold his... <sighs> hold his catch on if there's a bump. Uh, I know he takes a long run. This is the problem. It's a little... It's not too bad, but it's a little scary because you've got to run him. He just sits there running along for a long time before he lifts off. And then you've got to bring him in fairly hot as well because he, he's not a plane that's going to glide slowly and you don't want to let him get too far away from you because... Uh... Well, see what I mean? I tried, I tried cutting the throttle earlier there, but that really didn't help because that just caused him to dive more steeply. I've never really, I don't think I've ever succeeded in landing this guy without a bounce. If you land him under power, he bounces because of the power. Then I tried the opposite. I tried cutting the throttle as I was bringing him in in the hope that I could bring him in more slowly, you know, and he wouldn't bounce. But that just backfired because he, because, because cut, he didn't stall at least, I'll give him that. But he just, when I cut the power, he just dropped. So he hits more steeply. I don't know. So I've never yet found a way, and I haven't got time to mess around trying to find a way now, I've never yet found a way to land this guy without bouncing him. I think that was worse. Cutting the power like that made him bounce worse than just bringing him in under power. 
Now this guy has to be the most dubious of the planes I'm trying to fly, I guess. This is a Wilga. I bought it used from a swap mate a while ago. You can tell how old it is. It's model number one in my DX9 as its sticker is coming off. I don't know what I can do about that. It's been through the mill. It's had some crashes. Uh, it's had some parts replaced. Um, I don't know. Um, and it never was a terribly robust plane in the first place in various respects. The wing, the, one, the method for attaching the wings isn't all that robust. The floats are very flimsy. Uh, have wheels for it as well. I was flying it off wheels, but I put the floats on. I've got that piece of tape on the floats. How well that's going to hold up with trying to fly them off water, I don't know, because there's no cross braces on the struts at all. There's just nothing to brace. Oops. I didn't hook my transmitter onto my strap. I nearly dropped it there. I went to let it go on the strap, and it wasn't going to see. There's absolutely no cross braces on the floats, so they're pretty wiggly. They just held on by those thin bits of wire that don't even go into very positive attachments on the plane. The whole arrangement is all fairly wiggly. At one point, when I first got this guy from the swap meet and things, I was flying him on two cells. But then I bought some spares from the company in Thunder Bay that makes these. They have the molds for this plane and they make this plane and they... They, they suggested flying them off a three cell, and I'm, this is a three cell battery. Small three cell battery that I bought from them that I've been flying him off. Well, that vibration of the floats, I guess you wouldn't get on water. They're not very solid, but they wouldn't vibrate like that. But he's, uh, I don't know. I've never tried to fly him off water, never got round to it. I think I took him to one float fly, actually. I did take him to a float fly with the wings on, but it was a windy day and things weren't going that well. A lot of people were having crashes uh, and problems, oh, flipping and whatever, uh, problems taking off, flipping in the water and whatever. So uh, I elected not to try and fly him, given that he's so feeble. We'll try and land as gently as we can to not put a stress on things. So I've never had him off the water, but you know, I mean, he looks as if he ought to sort of fly off the water. He flies. He's a bit flimsy and whatever, but um, people I've certainly seen, the, this, this design has been around for quite a while. Uh, there are more robust versions of the world. The world is actually a Polish short takeoff and landing plane. Although this one, I noticed this one actually has a Canadian identification on it. Uh, and as I say, there is a, you can buy them from Hobby King, I think, or you could, but there is a company in Thunder Bay that sells them as well. Uh, there was, certainly. I bought, I bought several spares from them because I've gone through a couple of engine mounts and cowlings and whatever on him. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed and hope he flies okay off the water. Okay, now I have the UMX Cessna 182 out. Now, honestly, I've had a lot of problems with this guy, and I just had one of the problems I had with him again. Turned him, put the battery in, turned the transmitter onto his model, turned him on, put, it, put the battery in. Didn't work. Didn't work. Went into bind mode, even though the transmitter was on uh, to the model that had been flying in before. And I've had that happen several times before, so I had to rebind him. I've had various problems with this plane, and this was the only one that did not fly successfully at the last float fly. I took him to the last float fly and I, he, he sat, basically he sat so far back on the floats that his, the back of his, his uh, fuselage was trailing in the water. And then I, I found it very hard to steer him on the water, tried to punch him into the air and basically he went up and then flipped over. I didn't get control of him. So we'll try and do better this time. We'll try and do better, but uh, I had I, when I fitted the floats, I had problems as well because it's a bit awkward taking the front wheel off and putting the floats on, and then a piece from the the piece that controls the front wheel ended up rattling around loop when I took the front wheel off. Ended up because it's a normally a tricycle undercarriage. Ended up rattling around inside and jamming things. I got that out now. But, See, he seems to go off pretty smoothly there. 
let's just hope we can do that well off the water. I've taken him off quite a number of times off the grass and he's been quite successful. Every time except the first time, the first time I took him off the grass with the floats he crashed. Oh, I crashed him. Let's put responsibility where it lies. But, but that was because uh, he does need, he needed a substantial amount of up trim to compensate for the floats. He, he doesn't cope too well with the drag of the floats. And in order to make him fly properly with the floats, I had to put, why he's wandering like this? This is not how I'm trying to steer him. He's, and I, there's hardly any wind, but he seems to be wandering pointlessly. There you go, anyway, he's down. But I, I can't feel any wind at all, but he seemed to keep drifting off to the right there. I was trying to steer him straight and he kept drifting off to the right. Does he need trim? He shouldn't have done, he was trimmed out before. <sighs> yeah, I guess he could do with a bit of rudder trim to the left. Maybe part of the problem, the rudder may have gone out of trim again. And it wasn't any big problem to fly him, but... Uh, I don't think I've got time to try again now. He's basically okay. We'll put the throttle cut on because I, you know, I've got it. I've got, uh, I've got to get back for a meeting, and I just wanted to get all these planes in and out and whatever. Let's hope if he flies that well off the water, I'll be very happy. I didn't get him off the water successfully at all last time. As I say, I had great trouble pointing him in the direction I wanted on the water, and then I, I just failed to take him off properly. I tried to pop him off with too much throttle, and he flipped, went up and flipped, and I couldn't get control of him. And he crashed and broke one of the floats. Anyway, let's hope it goes better tomorrow and we're able to fly him successfully off the water. Okay, last two. The UMX Icon, now discontinued, I believe, which I bought from a swap meet last year. And the new UMX Timber. It's warmer this morning, milder this morning, so of course the bugs are coming out in force and trying to bite me. You can never win. If you're not freezing to death, you're being eaten alive. Anyway. Yeah, it's the joys of Canada for you. Actually, this year's not been bad for bucks, but it's getting a little bit bad in the tail end here. Uh, but it wasn't a bad year at all, really. Really, I've been out here at, uh, at dawn and sunrise many, many days this year, and I haven't had a lot of problems with the bucks, less than you'd expect. It's been a, something to do with the weather. It's not been a bad year for bugs this year. Okay. Will this guy take off? He certainly takes off off the water, I think. Will he take off off the grass? I did smooth out his front. Of course, that's just tape and that may fall off when I put it in the water, but I don't know. I don't even know. Maybe I should take it on. No, I think we'll leave it on and see. It's, it's a bit iffy whether it'll take off off the grass, even with the... Uh. Oh. But I thought I did get him to do it. Famous last words. Oh, shouldn't do that. No, that was you. I hope I didn't damage him there. I was getting a bit too enthusiastic about shoving him. Not a good idea. It's a delicate little plane. I really hope I did not damage anything there. That was kind of dumb. Yeah, I was just getting a bit too enthusiastic about giving it a shove to try and get it moving. Try not to run it into myself. Uh, that wasn't very sensible, was it? That was not very sensible. Oh dear. See, this is so fragile. I should not be trying to shove it with that. I think we may need to repair that a little bit. It's not broken, but it's got a little crease in it. It's not broken, but it's got a little crease in it. I think, we, I think we're going to need to put a little repair on that. That was my own foolishness. I was getting a bit too enthusiastic about trying to shove him. He flew nicely and off the lastly, water at the last float fly. Lastly, the new UMX Timber with the, uh, the, uh, the UMX Carbon Cub floats on. These are the same floats that are on the uh, Cessna, and I've also got a set on my um, UMX J3 Cub. Not, I don't have the JC come out this time because I don't have room for, uh, it's not easy. Well, I might be able to fit him in, but it would be pushing it, trying to fit another micro in the front, so let's not push it. So I'm just going to go with the three micros in the front there. The new plane, this just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, wasn't even aware it was coming out. I guess I 
missed the announcement, maybe just because it said timber, and I thought they meant the old timber. But anyway, very nice plane. I've been very happy with this guy. Flown him in some high winds. Have not flown him a 40 yet, though, because I bought him after the last float fly. Uh, so I would hope he would fly off water well. I've flown him on the float. I will put the wheels back on him for flying off grass, because he flies off grass great with the tundra wheels that come with him. That's one nice thing about him. He's a, about the only microplane I've ever had. You know, these micro-sized planes that would fly off grass on his wheels. So I will go back to that and fly him off the grass. But I wanted to fly him off the water, so I've got the wheels on now. Okay, so let's see how he works. Oh, didn't put flaps on. Forgot all about them, to be honest. But he hardly needs them. He has flaps, though. But I mean, really... Honestly, do you need flaps to fly something like this, which has already got tons of lift off water? I, uh, I uh, do not have the leading edge slats on either. I did not put them on. I don't know whether I'm going to because he seems to fly perfectly flying without them. Yes, they would give him more lift, but then again, you know, they would restrict his ability. You know, they, 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 this is the thing with the big timber. You know what, I think I'm actually going to have to go round again because he's so high. I wasn't intending him to be, but rather than forcing him down, I think I'm going to go round again. Because he does, even without the leading edge slats, he has an all with, with no flaps on, he tends to climb. I mean, okay, so we're going to come down this time and we're going to land. Yes, very nice, gentle landing. I think he should, hopefully, should... Never picked anything for granted, but I would hope he should fly well off water. See, he seems to, I mean, so far I've, he done, he's done anything I've asked of him extremely well. I've been very pleased with this plane. Flies, I've flown him in high winds. I maidened him in fairly high winds because I was reasonably confident just looking at him that he'd handle wind well. And he did. I've flown him in some very high winds. Uh, oh, bugs are really getting mosquitoes flying in my ear and trying to bite my hand. Sorry. Really getting attacked by the bugs here this morning. Anyway, so that's the last of these for this morning. The UMX Timber looking good. Hopefully we'll get him off the, the water tomorrow, all, going, all being well.